Hi, welcome to Historic Eats, where I recreate recipes from the past and share their history. Now, the inspiration for today's Historic Eat is over 100 years old, and it comes right out of the American South. It was a groundbreaking candy invention that included the combination of chocolate, caramel, marshmallows, and peanuts. I'm referring to none other than the Goo Goo Cluster. This channel demonstrates time-tested recipes as close to their original form as possible while sharing the history of how they came to be. Everything has a history, including your food, so click subscribe because there's a lot more historic eats to share. Today's recipe will include all the famous components of the Goo Goo Cluster, but I'm going to make it as bars in a pan just to simplify the process and make it easier to serve, but the flavors will be all Goo Goo Cluster, so let's get started. Begin by greasing an 8 by 8 inch pan. Line it with parchment paper. And spray it one more time. And I know it seems like a small pan, but remember these are candy, they're not cookies. So we'll be cutting them in like inch and a quarter, inch and a half squares, and that's going to yield between two and a half and three dozen pieces. So even though it looks small, it really isn't going to be by the time we cut them all up. Next, I'm going to melt our chocolate chips. I have three quarter cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. You can use either semi-sweet or milk chocolate for this part. It doesn't matter. I'm going to start out in 30 seconds um, and then I'll stir it and then put it in for 15 second intervals until it's completely melted. Okay, so that took a 30 second interval and one 15 second interval. And now I'm just going to spoon it into my pan here. Get the back of the spoon, I'm just going to spread it out. So this is a good foundation for our subsequent layers. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the freezer so it sets up fast. For the marshmallow nougat, I have two tablespoons of butter and five cups of mini marshmallows or one 10 ounce bag. And I'm gonna put this in the microwave for one minute and I'll stir it and put in for an additional minute until everything is completely melted. So that was in for one minute and I'm gonna just stir it, quick tip, make sure that you spray your spatula with non-stick spray because marshmallows are super sticky. And it's definitely beginning to melt underneath there. And I'll put it in for one more minute. So I actually stopped that at the 40 second mark because the marshmallows were really puffing up. So I knew it had to be close. Just stirring this until the butter and the marshmallows are completely combined. And now I have three quarter cup of white chocolate chips. Just pour those straight in there. And stir until those are melted. So now that that's completely smooth, the chips have completely melted into the marshmallow. I can pour it right on the cold chocolate. I just pulled that out of the freezer. So sticky. And I sprayed my offset spatula here with non-stick spray, and I'm just going to push the marshmallow all the way over to the edges. So I have one smooth layer. That looks good. Okay, and I'm going to put this back in the freezer while we start the caramel. In a medium saucepan, I have one stick or half a cup of butter. To that, I will add a half a cup of white sugar, a half a cup of brown sugar, a 
half a cup plus two tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk. This is actually seven ounces. So it comes in a 14 ounce can and you need to use half of it. One eighth cup or two tablespoons of light caro. half a teaspoon of vanilla and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Take this right over to the stove top. So I'm going to start on medium heat and just stir it while the butter is melted and then once everything is liquefied I'll switch over to a whisk and make sure you have your candy thermometer handy because you're going to have to watch the temperature. Um, we need it to get to 225 degrees. And once it's liquefied, you probably want to turn the heat down to like medium low. And like I said, at that point, we will con begin the continuous whisking. Okay, now that that's all melted, I'm just going to scrape the sugar crystals down from the sides. And I'm going to switch over to my whisk. And I'm going to reduce my temperature on my stove. I'm going to turn it down to a four and begin whisking and you can't stop because it could burn. This should take between five to 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes and as you can see, there's bubbles that are starting to pop. That means it's reached boiling point, so we're getting really close. This is when you just okay. start your temperature. And like I said, we're looking for 225 degrees. And keep stirring. Okay, I'm at 228, so I'm going to pull this off. So I pulled my nougat out of the freezer that was in there for about 15 minutes. It isn't fully set up, but it's definitely firm enough that I can pour another layer on it. So just spread that all around. And this needs to go back in the freezer. Now this will need to be in the freezer this time for almost at least 20 minutes, I'm going to say. Um, so I'll wait about 10 minutes and then I'll start the ganache and we'll just get the final layers on there. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes that the caramel layer has been in the freezer and I'm able to just lightly touch it. We just need it to be set up enough that we can put one more layer on top of it. So it is, I am able to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the ganache. I'm using ganache instead of just melted chocolate because I'm going to cut these into squares. And if I just pour melted chocolate over the top, it's going to to crack and separate. So that's the only thing that is different than the regular Goo Goo Cluster in this recipe is that I'm going to use ganache instead of a hard chocolate shell. Um, so to do that, I need one and a quarter cup of milk chocolate chips. And I do recommend milk chocolate for this part because that's what Goo Goo Cluster uses. And then to that, I'm going to add a third a cup of heavy cream. You do not want to use half and half. It needs to be heavy cream. And I'm just going to put this in the microwave and microwave it on 30 second intervals until it's all melted and smooth. So this is after two 30 second intervals. I still have a couple pieces in there. So I'm going to put it in for like 10 seconds and see if we can't get it perfectly silky smooth. That did the trick. The ganache looks great. So I'm just going to put a little bit on top of the caramel. And what I'm trying to do right now is just make a real thin layer that the peanuts can stick to. And now I have one cup of roasted peanuts and I'm just going to sprinkle that all over the top. These happen to be salted and I just picked that because I love salt. And next I'm just going to lay a piece of wax paper on here and just gently press 
the peanuts into the chocolate. And then for the final step, I'm just going to pour the rest of the ganache right over the top. Just cover all those peanuts up. This offset spatula, I'm just getting all these little corners covered up. Okay, so here it is. This looks great. Now, instead of putting it in the freezer, this time I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. It needs to chill for four to six hours, um, even preferably overnight, and then I'll be able to take it out and cut it into squares. In 1912, the Standard Candy Company of Nashville, Tennessee came up with an invention for a new candy that included multiple main ingredients, and this was radical. Up to this point, all candies consisted of one element, like a solid bar of chocolate, simple hard candy, and single wrapped taffy. But Standard Candy Company owner Mr. Hal Camel and his foreman Mr. Porter Moore had a new concept that revolutionized the future of candy bars. They incorporated four candy components, milk chocolate, marshmallow nougat, caramel, and roasted peanuts all into one treat. The namesake has its own history. While riding the streetcar to work, Mr. Camel was visiting with other riders, making conversation about his new candy, and he expressed that he still hadn't come up with a good name for it. The conversation moved along, and a fellow rider, a school teacher, asked about his new daughter. Camel told her she'd just spoken her first words, goo goo. The school teacher proclaimed, that's it, that's what you should name your new candy. And from that, a slogan was born too, goo goo. It's so good, people will ask for it from birth. This history-making candy is still made in Nashville today with the original recipe and with some new versions as well. The factory goes through 12,000 pounds of chocolate and makes between 300 to 400,000 Goo Goo Clusters daily. Also in 2021, its location on Lower Broadway underwent a $2 million transformation where it now offers a chocolate bar, all its signature candies, design your own stations and interactive classes for an immersive Goo Goo Cluster experience. Today, you can pick up Goo Goo Clusters at your local retailer, take a visit to Nashville, or even still, whip up a bite of history right in your own kitchen. Well, it's a new day. I left these in the fridge overnight so they could set up really good. So now it's time to cut them. I'm just peeling back the paper and I'm gonna start making like inch wide, inch and a quarter wide cuts. I hope you enjoyed the info portion about the Goo Goo Candy Cluster. I especially liked the vintage ad that called Goo Goo Clusters a nourishing lunch. I think we can agree that our nutritional standards have changed a little bit in the last hundred years. But one thing's for certain, our taste certainly hasn't because these are still as delicious as ever. So I'm just going to cut a few here. And this bigger slab, I'm going to try to cut like heart shapes with a cookie cutter, but I'm not sure if I have a cookie cutter that is thick enough because these are like so thick. But I wanted to show you on the camera how beautiful those layers came out. They look totally awesome. And these will stick to each other if you, you know, line them up on a tray to serve. So make sure that when you do serve them, you leave little spaces between them, or even you can put them in a little um, cupcake wrapper so they don't end up gluing themselves to each other. And now to give one a try. Mm. 
They are so good. They taste like a fresh, melty candy bar. The nougat and the caramel is, is just so good. And I have a real Goo Goo Cluster. And let's open that up and compare. As you can see, this looks like a big turtle. Cut inside. I have a lot more nougat in mine. Those are delicious. And share in the comments below if you've ever had a Goo Goo Cluster and what's your favorite flavor. Well, thank you again for joining me and click subscribe. I have more recipes to share with you that have really interesting, unique histories. So until next time, bye-bye.